Hi everyone, welcome to Concept in Medicine again. In our last cardiovascular system part one, we spoke about a lot of things. And today, we are going to be building on that. So if you've not watched the previous cardiovascular system part one, kindly do so. In this tutorial, we are going to be talking about the heart sounds in our cardiovascular system part two. Let's begin. So for the heart sounds, there are two normal heart sounds. The first heart sound and the second heart sound. Let's talk about the first heart sound. Look at the diagram very well. In our first series, we made mention of the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. Then we also talk about the valves. And if you observe closely, you will notice that the ventricles work in parallel, meaning that they are working at the same time. The ventricles will contract at the same time, meaning the right ventricle and the left ventricle will contract at the same time. And when they are contracting, we call that phase of the cardiac cycle systole, specifically ventricular systole. During that period that the ventricles are contracting, the atria, that is the right atrium and the left atrium would be relaxing. And when the phase goes into diastole, that's the ventricular diastole, the ventricles will be relaxing whilst the atria will be contracting. Now, during ventricular diastole, what will happen? The valves, that is the, the valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle, as well as the valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle, will open. Collectively, they are known as the atrioventricular valves. Why am I saying that? Because they are located between the atria and the ventricles. And if it's on the right side, then we call it the tricuspid valve. Because we said the tricuspid valve because it has three leaflets or three caps. On the left, we'll call it the bicuspid valve because it has two caps or two leaflets. Or another name for it is the mitral valve. Now, during ventricular diastole, the ventricles are going to be filled. Meaning during that period, the ventricles are going to be relaxed. And before they can be filled, there needs to be a gateway. And what is going to be that gateway? The valves must open. Meaning that the mitral valve and the triscopic valve would open to allow for blood to fill into the ventricles. And this will happen during ventricular diastole. When the ventricles are filled with blood, or when the process of ventricular filling is completed, then ventricular systole begins. Prior to ventricular systole, just at the beginning of ventricular systole, before, that is before the ventricular systole starts, just at that boundary, the atrioventricular valves, that is the triscopid, and the mitral valve would what? Close. And the moment the atrioventricular valves close, they generate a sound. And that sound is what we call the first heart sound. So you should know that the first heart sound is produced as a result of the closure of the atrioventricular valves. And the atrioventricular valves, what are we talking about? The mitral valve and the triscopic valve. So in short, the first heart sound is produced as a result of the closure of the mitral valve and the triscopic valve. Now, that tells you that the first heart sound has a mitral component and a triscopic component. We can see that it is contributed for by the mitral valve and the triscopic valve, M1, T1. The closure of these valves produce this sound known as the first heart sound. Now, let's move on. The first heart sound, in certain cases, can be loud and in certain cases can be soft. Let's look at those scenarios where it can be loud and also where it can be what, soft. So for the first heart sound to be loud, there are two case scenarios. The first one is if the mitral valve is stenosed, is narrowed. If the mitral valve is narrow, it means that filling of the left ventricle is going to have a problem in such a way that towards the end of diastole, the feeling becomes less and less. And also another case scenario is when the diastolic feeling time becomes short, meaning that the PR interval is shortened. So in the case of a shortened PR interval, and also in the case of mitral stenosis, 
And for the case of mitral stenosis, it means that in this case, it is narrowed. It's, it's already narrowed. More blood is not flowing into the left ventricle. So in that case, that delay would be perceived as a resistance. So when that happens, when the mitral valve wants to close, it will close with massive force. And if it's going to close with massive force, it will generate a resonating sound which is transmitted into the walls of the thorax. And that should you perceive at the apex, you would be able to have a palpable first heart sound. And if you have a palpable first heart sound at the apex, then we'll call that a tapping apex beat. I hope that makes sense to you. Very soon we'll would comment on the concept surrounding the apex beat too, so that you can get the whole analogy. So in short, I'm trying to say that the loud X1 can be realized in these two scenarios. The first one is mitral stenosis, and the second one is when the PR interval is short, or you can say, when the diastolic filling time is short. So these are the two scenarios where you would have a loud X1. What of a soft X1? For the soft X1, it can be heard in mitral regurgitation and also when the diastolic filling time is prolonged, or in the case of a prolonged PR interval and ECG. Yes, you should expect the X1 to be soft. Now, let's move on to the second heart sound. The second heart sound is produced as a result of the closure of the aortic valve and the pulmonary or pulmonic valve. And you should know that the aortic valve and the pulmonary or pulmonic valve together or collectively are known as the semilunar valves. We spoke about this in our cardiovascular system series, part one, where we said because of the shape of the valve, for the aortic and the pulmonic valve, they look like a half moon. Hence, collectively, we we'll refer to them as semilunar valves. Semilunar valves. The closure of the semilunar valves gives rise to the second heart sound. Now, let's talk about some of the abnormalities of the second heart sound. Now, what you are supposed to know is that the most important abnormality of the second heart sound in case of the component, and if I say in case of the component, I mean the second heart sound is contributed for by the aortic valve and the pulmonic valve or pulmonary valve. So what I'm trying to say is that the first component, or one of the components, which is A2, the its most important abnormality in this case is softening, softening of A2. The most important abnormality of the A2 component of the second heart sound is softening of A2. And for the softening of A2, where and when are you going to have that? You will have this in the case of aortic stenosis. And when does the A2 become loud? For the A2 to become loud, then you can think of one, tachycardia, two, transposition, and three, hyper Tension. Again, remember that the most important abnormality of the A2, which is a component of the second heart sound, if I say A2 meaning is arising from the aortic component, is the aortic stenosis. That would give rise to a soft A2. So the most important abnormality of the A2 is what? Softening of the A2, which is caused by aortic stenosis. And for the loud A2, you would think of TTH, that is tachycardia, transposition, I'm referring to transposition of the great arteries, and also the hypertension. What of the P2 component? For the P2 component, it will be soft in the case of pulmonary stenosis, and it will be loud in the case of pulmonary what? Hypertension. So the P2 is soft in the case of pulmonary stenosis, and it is loud in the case of pulmonary hypertension. The trick here you should know is that we said first heart sound, closure of the triscopy and mitral valve, meaning that the triscopy and the mitral valve, they are going to be like twins. They are going to be like siblings. They are going to be happening at the same time. Just like the closure of the aortic and the pulmonary valve give rise to the second heart sound, they are going to be moving together. So when we get to members, we are going to be creating concept based on that analogy. So that is for the first heart sound and the second heart sound. Let's move on 
two, the additional hard sound, where we'll be talking about X3 and X4. And when we are done with that, we'll look at the auscultation points of the heart. Let's talk about the additional sounds. That's the X3, the third heart sound, and the fourth heart sound. Let's begin with the third heart sound. So you should know that the X3 sound is usually low pitch and can be heard in young people below the age of 30 years. And as such, when it's heard be below the age of 30 years, it's considered innocent. And the third heart sound becomes pathological when heard over the age of 30 years. Let's move on. For the X3, that's the third heart sound, you should know that the third heart sound is as a result of high atrial pressure causing a rapid passive blood flow striking a compliant ventricle. What I'm trying to say is that if the pressure in the atria is very high, then it means that the blood in the atria, the chambers of the atria, they'll be falling passively without any effort from the left ventricle and they'll be striking a compliant ventricle. When they strike a compliant ventricle, they produce the sound known as the third heart sound. And usually they are low pitch. Now, what can make the third heart sound become loud? For the third heart sound to become loud, it can happen as a result of the following two scenarios. The first scenario, that will make the third heart sound become very loud or perceived very high, which will give us a loud history. It's in the scenario of a dilated left ventricle with a rapid ventricular filling. What can lead to a dilated left ventricle with a rapid ventricular filling? The first thing we can think of is mitral regurgitation. When the valves are incompetent such that blood still leaks into the left atrium, yes, that can give rise to a dilated left ventricle with a rapid ventricular filling. And in that case, yes, the third heart sound becomes loud. So the loud S3, first scenario, dilated left ventricle with rapid ventricular filling. And the cases that we can look at is the mitral regurgitation and ventricular septal defects. That will give us a loud S3. Three. Another scenario we can talk about is in the case of a poor left ventricular function and that could be due to a post myocardial infarction state and also a dilated cardiomyopathy. In these scenarios, yes, the third heart sound is going to be loud and you should remember that the third heart sound heard before the age of 30 years is considered innocent and those heard after the age of 30 years will be considered pathological and you should also know that the third heart sound is low in pitch. Let's move on and talk about the fourth heart sound. So for the causes, you can think of aortic stenosis and hypertensive heart disease. And one thing you should always note is that for the fourth heart sound, that's the X4, it is always pathological. Take note of that. It's always pathological. Whether you are young, old, or middle age, once X4 is heard, it is always pathological. Now, let's look at the schematic illustration of how they occur. That's the normal heart sound X1, X2, and the additional heart sound X3, S4. In what reading do they occur? Let's look at that. So if you look at this diagram, you realize that X1 occurs at the beginning of C2. Then C2 goes ahead. Then getting to the end of C2, you have... X2, that will be at the beginning of diastole. At the end of systole and at the beginning of diastole, you have X2. Then if you are going to the end of diastole, you have X3. Then again, at the beginning of diastole, you have X4. It doesn't mean that all these four sounds will be heard in a normal patient. No, only X1 and X2 can be heard. And to some extent, X3. If the age is below 30 years, we will consider it as what? Innocent. You should know that the X1 and X2 are the two normal heart sounds that you hear. The lap dap that we've been talking about is X1, X2. Then, if there's an X3, it will occur just after X2. The third heart sound will be heard immediately after the second heart sound. What of the fourth heart sound? It is heard or may occur before the first heart sound. Then, another thing I want to say before we conclude this topic is that X1 always corresponds to the upstroke, that is systole. 
sound. It means that if you are listening to the first heart sound, if you are listening to the heart sound as X1 and X2, always make sure to palpate simultaneously the carotid pulse. So any of the sounds that is synchronous to the carotid pulse becomes the X1 because S1 is synchronous to the astro, which is Sisto. So X1, as I told you, just at the beginning of Sisto, it will be produced. X2, at the end of Sisto and at the beginning of Diasto, you have the X2. I hope that makes sense to you. And if you have any challenges, feel free to leave those in the comment box. I'll be glad to respond to any of your questions. And at this point, thank you very much for staying with me throughout this conceptual lesson. Kindly make sure to subscribe, share, like, and comment on what you want to see next on my channel. This is Concept in Medicine, and it's a bye for now. Mm -hmm.